Hey friends, I have some thrift flips from the most recent thrift finds and a couple that I've had a little while. This Dollar General rabbit had my initial on it. They only had like three left in the store and one of them was a C. So obviously I had to get it. It was $3.50 and it is that MDF board but it was painted to look like wood and you know I have to personalize things so I put my touch on it by using the moss green chalk paint and the ballet slipper chalk paint I, I just dry brush the dry well you know when you say dry brush it's just putting a little bitty bit on your paintbrush and dragging it across and the ballet slipper chalk paint on the initial really made the initial stand out a lot better the bow is made of uh, the raggy quilt that is just going into dozens of projects because you know you just need a little bit sometimes and I've got it out on my front porch on the chippy chair beside my little uh, <laughs> rain boots that are now flower arrangement holders vase that's what you call arrangements yeah vase <laughs> and I am enjoying pink so much this year all right I had the little frame decor that said Merry Christmas and however cute it was I just wanted to be able to use it before Christmas and I was thinking to myself well I could always change it back if I wanted to and I could but I probably won't I've got lots of things that say Merry Christmas but I had an idea for what, what I wanted this to say and I was able to pop that back panel out and then I had to um, hammer the brad nails out of that piece I went to the printer and just you know printed out letters that would fit each of those little spaces and I used glue stick this time because uh, some you know Mod Podge often makes a little bit of a wrinkle you know it, it's hard to get it perfectly flat so I decided there wouldn't be any real friction or wear and tear against these individual letters but once I put the paper on it looked really sterile and too new so I took just a teensy tiny bit of the green moss paint and dragged it from the edges up to the center of each of those little letters and then I thought okay well let's just go ahead and do a little bit of that same technique to the frame which I did and in the meantime I had printed out a uh, a landscape a vintage landscape with the rest of the phrase on it and this is something I've been saying for a long time now when I put the panel back in I just I didn't do all the brad nails business I just held it down till the hot glue dried and that was plenty but as you can see happy is a daily choice and I really have been saying that joy is a choice happy is a daily choice I just I just thought that was something I would enjoy reading and <laughs> it's right there for now and you know how I am I'll switch things around speaking of switch I had an idea <laughs> and I go through a lot of steps to not a lot a few steps to do this and it occurred to me that there would be a, a lot easier way to do this after I did it but I'll show you how I did it first all right these little frames come from Hobby Lobby in the wedding section. They're little place card holders, like to put on the tables, to say table one or whatever, probably. All right, I peeled all that extra stuff off so that it was just the frame, and I put it on there. Well, it, I, I realized pretty quickly that the frame slightly overlapped the screw holes. So here I am with my power tools. You know I got power, power tools for Christmas and my birthday because because I'm crazy um, but actually I love having my own power tools now Ben has a has a drill but his is always somewhere I can't get to so I told him I said I really want to drill <laughs> he said you're kidding I said, no I really want my very own drill so here it is and I'm going back and forth trying to it's just plastic that's coming off so that's fine and I worked on it until I was able to get the screws in there and then I went and put it in my rose room you can see that pale pink color on the walls and it occurred to me after I did this uh, well you know a quicker way to do this would be to just walk up to your white 
switch plate and hot glue it on. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll do next time. I don't know. All right. The light globes came, uh, paid a dollar each for five of them. Three of them went to a light fixture in my small bathroom upstairs. And then I had these two extra. And I thought, you know, that seated glass is really pretty. So I took two little round discs. This came in a package, I think, from Hobby Lobby, but I believe you can get them just about anywhere. Um, well, not just about anywhere, but you know, places where craft items are sold. But the knobs I wanted to use were some little crystal knobs that came in a package, and I had some left over, and they had black hardware on it, so I painted the, the tops black. And then I hot glued the whole shebang onto the top of these little glass globes, light fixture globes. But I'll tell you, they popped off at, in transit and it's a miracle I didn't drop the whole globe and break it. So what I should have done, and it didn't occur to me, was to use the uh, epoxy, the E6000, and hot glue at the same time. That gives you instant hold and as it cures, permanent hold. So don't do what I do, do as I say, not, not do as I do. But here I have them in my bedroom and oh my goodness, can you hear the lawnmower in the background? We have a new lawnmower and it's, it's right outside the window, sorry. Those are my um, wedding pearls that I wore on my wedding day. And, and they're real pearls. They're good. They were a gift from Ben. And those are little teeny tiny Smoky Mountain souvenir plates that I got when I was a little girl. Because we used to go to the Smoky Mountains when I was a little girl. So that was fun. All right. These gift bags. I've been doing this for a while. And you can get the package of bags at Dollar Tree. I think I got that bag and tissue from Dollar General. But the clear stamp sets from Pop Shelf are so much fun. Now, I don't know how they're selling them for $2 a set. The ink pad set was $3, and they had some of the cutest little designs, and I thought, okay, this year, now I've been doing Easter baskets for my grown children since, you know, you know when they're born and all through childhood, and then even after they're married, I still do Easter baskets, but then when the um, grandbabies came along, it was getting to be a lot of baskets. So. I decided I would just switch over to little personalized gift bags because I, I do still put candy and treats for every single one and I like to put their name on them in some kind of way so this year I'm using my stamp set and can you see I've got that acrylic block I got that set of acrylic blocks from Amazon and you can arrange your little acrylic uh, no no your clear silicone stamps onto that acrylic block and it causes you to be able to see through it as you're pressing down and getting it in the spot you want. And I was kind of experimenting with the different colors. Nothing was as good as the dark brown or black. I could have used black. But the, again with a lawnmower, y'all, I'm, I'm in my bedroom. You'd think I wouldn't be disturbed back here, but somehow my family finds a way to make an appearance in every video. But you know, there are a million of us. So, um, I'm arranging the letters and on the little name Claire I realized that I should have I think it would have looked a little better if I had arranged those letters closer together but it's still good and I'm not going to redo it I think it's cute but on the next name I did arrange the letters as close as I could because it looked a little neater that way I liked the look of it better but this is fun and like I say some of them I experimented with some gold ink and uh, a bronze ink and it didn't turn it didn't show up as well on that brown paper so I just stuck with the brown oh and for the boys I just used little stencils I had a set of stencils also from pop shelf but those floral stamps are just adorable and I had the the set of you know popular words like hello and thank you and celebrate so I tried that out and these don't have anything in them yet, and I didn't do everybody's yet, but I just did a, a sampling because I was really eager to see how those would turn out. And I bought the, the multicolor tissue paper because it's very fun and, and festive to have all the colors together. And I do just like that. I'll line them up some kind of way on my table or on the piano, and they can come in and get their bags. Now, I've already shown you this bunny transfer method a few times, but I found this 
little um, thrifted thing and I remember paying a dollar for it yeah I think it says a dollar on the back and um, I, I've probably had it three or four years and I found it it's so flat that it was stuck between some um, other things like book kind of things and when I found it I was like oh my word I'm gonna go put a bunny transfer on it so for those of you who have not yet seen me do this method the transfers are so fun to use you just pick out the one you want tape it in place peel the back off and rub it on until it sticks to your little decor item and that's all there is to it and it's the most fun ever I, I've all, almost used every single piece of it I think I have two bunnies left and I'll try to put those on something besides black metal but I just couldn't resist with that piece because that's that just shows up so cute I'm loving it so much that's right inside my front door in the foyer okay remember the candle sconce boxes that we decided were probably uh, from the 1970s colonial I decided I wanted to take the handle and the candle holder off they just unscrewed it wasn't even hard to do and I wiped it cleaned it up well enough and then put a coat of the plaster chalk paint because plaster is my favorite neutral color and when it was dry I roughed it up on the edges with my little sanding block from the dollar 25 tree and there are these two little round transfers that are that they came with the rabbit transfers but I decided I would like to have them on the front of my wood box that now is holding boy that looks like a lot of jumbled mess um that's really almost painful to the eye to look at but this is the way we live I have to have my stuff out my boys do not put things back in the cabinets but they're they're actually doing pretty well putting it in that coke tray but um that is so fun those little transfers just added a little something to it and so those are some of my favorite vintage little pieces in there but I have a feeling I'm going to need to switch those out to wooden spoons that I would actually be fine with the boys using because but you know Sam uses that little spiral egg beater it's rusty and he doesn't care he loves to use that thing every time he needs to beat an egg that's what he uses and I'm like son this is not actual you know functional it's just decor but he uses it anyway okay the wood box this little wood box was a dollar and I tried y'all it had a screen in it I tried to incorporate the little screen and the house shape but I just couldn't make it look cute and I just couldn't enjoy it so I decided I'm just gonna do a whole different thing with this I did paint black to cover up the original checkerboard kind of stuff on it and then I took a thin piece of cardboard and just covered up the little house area you see that I'm hot gluing I just hot glued those little beads on and that was sufficient and then that is drywall spackling that I dipped out of our big bucket that Ben actually uses in our house and got myself just a little portion of it well after the spackling is dry um, I go back and dry brush over it a little bit now here I am I'm mod podging did I, I think I skipped saying that I did use the plaster colored paint for a first coat and then I went back and gave it another coat of plaster or white wax actually was that last thing you saw and I just really love the little printout is just an image from Pinterest I just type in vintage vegetable label I don't know why I had to have vegetable label I think that's actually a an orange like, an, like it was on a crate of oranges or something but lots of things that you can find on Pinterest are really good quality and you can just print them right out just save the image print it out and there you go so you can see that I made my cardboard section it's like the thin kind of cardboard that um, food boxes or I'm trying to remember what I what I did use for that little piece but it's like a gift box or something but I made it a little bit bigger than the image all right this breakfast tray you know someone had put brick contact paper Ella she is always watching what I do every second every move I make all right it was $10.99 but half price day made it $5.50 and um, I gotta say it took me quite some time to peel that stuff off it was really stuck on and I used my little spatula tool and I scraped on it and at this point I'm sitting on the couch watching an episode of Alfred Hitchcock presents with Ben I was so proud of it when I finally got all that off and 
I decided it needed some of my Waverly Toile wallpaper, which I mod podged onto. I think it's the I think it was pre-pasted, and I probably could have wet it and put it on, but I was on the couch and it was loving at night, and so I'm, I mod podged, and it was very pretty, and I loved it so much. And then when I got it all done and had it staged, I was like, I'm going to enjoy this ever so much. I actually still have some Waverly wallpaper remnants left. I paid something like 50 cents a roll for these little remnant rolls of this beautiful toile. Now, you saw what I did to the wood box, and I'm about to do a similar thing to this pepper mill. It's going to get cutified. All right, it was 50 cents. Hard to beat. Nice wooden. And I thought I might make a candle holder out of it, but then I saw this image. Aren't those adorable? I think the brand is Mud Pie. So I was like, oh, I can do that. Now notice where I'm gluing these on to. I'm gluing, gluing them right around the bottom edge, and that would probably have been fine. But after I got them all glued on, I realized that I had intended to put them halfway up that bottom section, so I popped them all off and glued them back on. They were hard to get off, too. So a little bit of dry brushing of that brown acrylic paint kind of made it more the same tone as the actual wood, so that when I did the paint, you know, the paint over it and then distressed it, I wanted it to look the same when it distressed back down. And I did use a little bit of a wet wipe and then I used a little bit of a sand block and I did put masking tape around the little silver knob at the top but um, that's pretty darn cute for a 50 cent project those little tiny beads they're half beads and they came from there were 300 little half beads in a bag from Amazon and I'm I'm gonna be able to do lots of projects with that one little bag but just added some jute which I frayed the, the very ends of it. Now I realize it is nowhere near July 4th but when I went in Family Dollar they had some summer and July 4th things out. This big palette flag was only five dollars and I really thought it was a, a good a good decor item good sized and the the concept of it was good but you know it was very mm, sterile in my opinion because I like things to look aged and vintage and old so I just took some watered down elephant gray chalk paint and just went over the whole thing with uh, the watered down chalk paint even over the stars and then I pounced it on I striped it on the white stripes and the red stripes and then I uh, pounced and wiped over the blue area I did now look how look at the difference before and after look how sterile and white and then look how much more authentic or just to my liking I like things to look old-timey and mm, like they've had a story to tell it won't be in my foyer forever just for this picture I mean I'll put it back up later now I've done several straw totes and I think all of my kids all my girls have them in their homes um, this one, this little purse that I found for a dollar, I've never seen such heavily stitched. It was hard to get those little green things off, and when I cut them off, they kind of left holes. So I took a little bit of spackling and filled the holes and decided that I would try using the watered down, again, the watered down gray, elephant gray chalk paint to give it a little different look, a different tone. And for now, it is hanging in my foyer, but um, I'll probably gift it to someone. Those gray beads um, were from Walmart Christmas decor department, and I did have them hanging above my kitchen sink during the Christmas season, and all the way through uh, Valentine's Day, I even kept them up there because they were really pretty. And I thought since the bag had some gray on it that the gray beads would be fun to use, but that's an easy, easy little thing. Now, this is just a bonus, and it's not the squirrel that was in my attic. We don't hear it anymore. Maybe it maybe it left here I hope it did um, the air dry clay this came from Walmart and um, I've got a mold I've got my very first set of molds but look I dropped I've had this set of squirrel um, salt and pepper shakers 
for probably 15 years. I love them. I, I don't think I paid more than about a dollar for them, but they're sentimental because I've had them so long. And the ears got broken off of one, so I molded the ears and then painted it back. I think I could make it look even closer um, by adding some of the clear nail polish onto it to put a little gloss back on there. But that was fun. That was all kinds of fun. And I hope that you saw things in there that uh, you could do, and I called it quick flips because um, it wasn't big furniture pieces, and some had more steps and some had less steps, but they're all fun. I love you guys. Have a great day.